Hey everybody, spring has sprung in the Southern Appalachian Mountains and I've been doing some work in my yard to make a new vegetable bed and clearing out leaves and sticks, piles and piles of leaves and sticks. And as I was separating the piles of leaves from the piles of sticks, um, I came across a magical little creature, or I should probably say magical little creatures um, in my yard that I have not found as of yet in my amazing, overgrown, crazy Appalachian backyard. Um, and I thought it was really cool that I found it right now with all this crazy virus stuff we're going through um, in our world right now because it could have some use for um, for respiratory health. So this creature I found is a lichen and this lichen's name is Usnia and sometimes or Usnia and sometimes people call it old man's beard but its proper name is Usnia and it's a lichen so I don't know how much botany or um, organism knowledge some of you have, but a lichen is a composite organism. So that means it's actually a couple of different organisms that are working together and have combined as one unit to live in a symbiotic relationship. And Usnia is a, is a lichen and is a combination, um, is a lichen, lichen composite organism and it's a combination of an algae and fungi and so the um the fungi are kind of like us humans they can't um they can't make their own food they can't photosynthesize they can't take energy from the sun and the air and make their own food they have to feed on other organisms um usually different fungi feed on different organic matter in the soil or they feed on like decaying wood sometimes they feed on living they have a symbiotic relationship with living wood um, but they have to get food from an outside source um, and so um, when this symbiotic relationship happens what happens is that the f there's fungi and they attach themselves basically to this algae and they create a they create an environment for the algae where it's not um, harm, harmed by UV rays um, and it can grow prolifically. Well algae are kind of like plants. They're more like plants and they can actually photosynthesize. So the fungi um, attaches itself to the algae, makes the algae proliferate more by providing an ideal little protected ecosystem for it. And the algae then makes food. And so then the fungi has a, has a consistent source of food by allowing this, by creating this ecosystem for the algae to exist. Um, so basically it's like fungi farming algae and it's really kind of cool. Um, so Usnia can be found growing all over North America and in Europe and parts of Asia and even Africa. Um, and it's really easy to find anywhere that trees grow. Um, I commonly find it on oak and hardwood uh, logs in, in, in the forest around here. Um, but they are very common on pine and spruce and fir trees. And um, you can see it a lot on the apple trees here. So when we're talking about Appalachia and, and common trees we have here, we have a lot of apple trees here and orchards, old orchards, and you can find Usnia on the apple trees and um, sometimes on the walnuts. So yeah, and it's like a blue green, sometimes yellow lichen. Um, and I find it in little tufts around here like this, but if you were on the west coast, it would be like longer, almost 
almost like Spanish moss, but not completely like Spanish moss, but it, it, it would be longer and stringier and have a more yellow tinge to, than to this like gray, blue, green that it has here. Um, so, and the easiest way to identify it, because it can be confused with oak moss, especially if you're finding it on oak leaves around in, in the south, on oak limbs, um, it can be confused with Spanish moss. And the best way to identify it is that when it's moist and wet, it's rained recently or you've soaked it in water for a while, you can pull it apart and it has this really cool little way to ID it. So I'm going to try to show you guys that in the camera. Um, I've been soaking it in water and I hope I've soaked it long enough because it's pretty dry. So let's see if I can get a longer piece out to show you how to ID Usnan. So you take a little piece of it and if you can see when I move my fingers it's kind of elastic. It kind of has a bounce to it. So if you pull it apart, let me see if I can get it apart without breaking it. There is, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. There's a little tiny white filament right here. Uh, ah, 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 I'm not good at this. Um, there's a little tiny white filament inside if you pull the green stuff off, the algae off the outside. And that little white filament is the fungi living inside. And it, it is actually, if it's moist, it bounces, it's boingy. I call it the boingy boingy herb, um, which is super cheese, but that's what I do. Um, let's see if I can find a bigger, better piece, a bigger branch. But that's how you ID it, is you pull it apart and you look for this springy little elastic white filament on the inside. And if it bounces after it's been soaked and it's wet for a while, um, you've got Usnia. It's a really magical plant. There's, can you see the filament? I pulled the green off and you can see that one white little piece sticking up. That's on the inner side of the green and it's, um, that's, the, that's the fungi and it has an elasticity to it. it. It bounces, it has elasticity to it. So that's how you ID it. Um, it can grow on dead trees or living trees. Um, and I most often harvest it, I, I, or actually not most often, all the time, I harvest it um, from fallen limbs. I don't ever take it from trees where it's growing on, uh, still growing on the trees and on living trees. Um, and the reason for that is that like in some places it's abundant and we have a lot of it and then there are other areas of the country um, that it's becoming an endangered species so I feel like it's better to take it off the off the ground off of fallen limbs instead of actually going and trying to harvest it when it's still growing on a living tree. Um, so Usnia in Chinese medicine is considered a cold and dry herb energetically and um, it was used to remove dampness and heat um, and reduces to, to reduce toxic toxicity the Native Americans used it to treat wounds with to pack wounds with and treat wounds with and um, for gangrene and in South America it um, was used for like cold and flu remedies and respiratory remedies. And in modern use, there are studies that show that Usnea is um, antimicrobial because it has, um, it contains different acids that are antimicrobial in it, namely Usnic, usnic acid or Usnic acid. Um, and ustinc acid has shown to be effective against gram-positive bacteria. So those are your strep, your staph, um, bacterial pneumonias, um, tuberculosis. But it also has shown an affinity for some viruses like um, the herpes, herpes simplex virus, um, as well as, uh, as herpes simplex virus, as well as um, HPV virus too and Epstein-Barr. So it's shown some antiviral 
activity, but um, but really good strong activity against anti or uh, antibacterial activity against gram positive bacteria. But it wouldn't help you with like E. coli gram negative um, or Salmonella, which are gram negative bacteria. Um, so I, for like herpes simplex, I've used it in combination with lemon balm, um, like for for the herpes around the mouth. Um, I have some family members that get cold sores, and so I've used it for that with some success. Um, I've used usnea most often for urinary tract infections, for UTIs, in combination with horsetail and um, uva ursi and uh, marshmallow root. Um, and uh, it also can be used in respiratory syrups to dispel phlegm from the chest. Um, it's really good at getting into the lungs and helping to helping your body to expel it with a friend expel phlegm from your lungs and I would use it in combination with something like elecampane root um, or OSHA which I don't really use OSHA um, also because it's an endangered plant so I don't really mess with OSHA root very much but um, elecampane or um, wild cherry bark some kind of expectorant so if you use usnea with an expectorant it help get rid of dampness out of the lungs um, and it could be done as a tea I prefer it as a tincture because as a tincture you are you you would do it 50 50 water and alcohol and the alcohol will grab your acids that show antimicrobial activity so antiviral antifungal and antibacterial um, but in the water portion of the extract, if you do a hot water extraction to combine first, um, in the water portion, you get the long chain polysaccharides, which are part of the fungi that grows inside of the algae. And long chain polysaccharides help to help our bodies stimulate immune cells. So white blood cells, your key lymphocytes, um, NK cells, T cells, all of the good cells in our body that fight things that are not supposed to be in our body and make our body stronger to withstand and create antibodies to those things um, are stimulated by long chain polysaccharides which are in here and those are water soluble and um, so I like to combine it and take it that way um, it's a really really cool little creature. I really like lichens. I think they're cool. The whole symbiotic relationship to becoming one duality of lichens and of this lichen, I, I think is really, really cool. And I really like it. So that's my video about Usnea for you guys. You could use this in tincture form and make it part of um, a respiratory syrup. You could just take it in tincture form. Um, but I would use it in combination in a respiratory syrup, maybe with elecampane, maybe red root, elderberries, um, cordyceps mushrooms. I like to have two fungi in, in my formulations sometimes. I think that fungi like to hang out with other fungi. So yes, it's a really cool little lichen and I will make a video soon and show you guys how to tincture this awesome little plant that I found or lichen, not plant, that I found. All right, have a good day.